Music Therapy Labs here. Hello everybody. I'm at Guitar Center in Concord on Pandemic Day Shutdown Day number one. <laughs> I had to swing by near a nearby shop here to pick up something for my mom out here in Concord, California. So I thought I'd call and see if Guitar Center was going to be open and they said that yes, today they're open till 10 and then they're shutting down. <laughs> So the world is shutting down. I, I'm sorry I'm laughing. I know there's some people that are suffering from uh, this, and I'll probably suffer from this too, but I'm, I'm dealing with it with laughter because sometimes laughter is the best medicine outside of music being the best therapy, right? So here I am in the, the uh, amp room. This, they have a really nice little amp room here in Concord, California, at Guitar Center. Look at these multi-effects here. And um, I'm a new proud owner of not one of these. Not the Helix, not the Big Mama, not the Big Daddy Helix and the Helix LT. No, I, I got one of the little mini ones. I got, uh, oh, check that out. I got uh, the HX Stomp by Line 6. And uh, I do have a Pod Pro, one of those red rack mount thingies with the whole floorboard thingy. So in the near future, which might be soon, because <laughs> there's not going to be a lot of other stuff going on, right? I'm going to be doing some demos of not just the HX Stomp, which is a full bore helix apparently, but I'm going to be doing um, I'm going to be doing uh, some comparisons from the old technology with the new technology. Look at some of this relic stuff. Some of you guys like the relic, some of you don't. I'm cool with it. This one's a custom telly right here. Looks like it's uh, about $3,500. Right. I like that pasty white. You can kind of see the grain through it. Kind of ghost white. Dig it. Never owned a telly with the the traditional bridge. The one telly I have has a like a six six screw standard type of bridge, like one of these, I think, on it. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's like one of those. I can't recall. Oh, that's an ultra. I can tell by the color. It's got that root beer, sparkly root beer thing going on. Noiseless pickups. And this is not a, you can tell by the body style, a little bit, a little bit different on the horn there, right? A little fatter. This is not a less, I mean, uh, I was going to say less ball, a Stratocaster, but this is a, uh, yep, Ernie Ball, Music Man, Cutlass. Very nice. And look at that. Look at that. Really nice maple. Look at the neck on that. Ah, oh, beautiful. Roasted maple, it looks like. Nice flames. And that's that really cool kind of like placid blue, kind of a blue, kind of a greenish blue. I would say in this light, it looks more blue than the green. But compared to that, see how much that jumps out at you, blue? Oh, I'm digging that jazz face though. Look at that. Of course, they have all those covers on there that you would want to definitely remove. Oh, so look at this super heavy drag behind the truck relic job here. Paint over, looks like a crackled candy apple, burnt orange, red kind of paint over a, looks like a three-tone sunburst, yeah. Worn down pretty, pretty harshly. Heavy relic strat. Yeah, candy apple, red. What looks weird to me about these uh, relic jobs is that, okay, they did the neck too. All right, so I'll give them kudos for that. They wore the neck down a bit. But there are all these like dings and bumps and whatnot and spots that you probably wouldn't really expect. And then you got brand new tone knobs, right? And everything else looks brand new. Doesn't make sense. If you're gonna relic the guitar, Relic everything. Relic the whole thing, right? I mean, this one looks cool. And some, you know, a little more oldie looking, oldie timey. I dig it. So this is a heavy relic, 59. But you know, the neck, of course, you can't relic the neck. Uh, well, I guess you could, you know. I guess you could. So, oh, some nice PRSs. Here's that Trumpus Green. 
I call it Trumpus, not Trampus. <laughs> Trump, Trumpus. <laughs> Kidding. Let's not go political. There's too much stuff hitting the fan right now in the world to be getting too political. I think we need to work things out, work it out, people. Solve problems. Stop blaming each other. Work on solutions. I'm no fan of the guy. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> All right. So in this in this light, it looks like a three town, but in the light I'm in, it looks like a two town. Is that weird or what? So the light, the lighting, the way it's catching on the camera here looks like it's going to you know fading into a red, to a burst, but. Um, it's actually a very dark tobacco and you don't really see the red in person. Pretty cool. Standard. Less small. I wonder how much it weighs. These things are all, look, everything in here has got a lock on it so you can't even take it off. And, oh, look at the mini. So this is like a deluxe. This is made to be like a deluxe. So vintage 70s, Gibson Les Paul Deluxe. I saw one at uh, Real Guitars with a center pickup, kind of a la Pete Townsend for eighteen hundred, and it's it's really relic, like a real relic, and it freaking felt great in the hand. Oh, they even did the split body style on the on the uh, I guess the reviews here. What do they call them? They call them a vintage Gibson Les Paul Deluxe Cherry Somber Solid Body Electric Guitar. So it's from the vintage collection, but I guess what that means is they created it to be like a true seventies deluxe with the mini. Humbuckers and all, see the size difference compared to those PF style ones there. Um, this one's a nice, kind of interesting burl or flame. Is that burl or flame? So that's flame, that's burl, right? That looks like big flames to me. Flame, flame, burl, right? <laughs> Help me out, people. <laughs> I think I know what I'm talking about. This is kind of like a even though it looks more red on the edges, it's kind of like a Texas tea thing or iced tea. Iced tea bursts, yeah. So I dig these iced tea bursts. It looks more yellow, kind of lemon yellow to me with the brown edges. That's a historic. And then this one is not a historic. This is just your standard traditional Pro V flame maple and washed cherry burst. 2800 buckaroos. And here's a nice, <clears throat> I guess that's a 355, or is it a 55? What are they calling that? An ESP196MHH dot. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But it's got the sparkle body, sparkle black, which is pretty cool. Is that that Texas tea? No, they call it the graphite, graphite metal color. Here's a nice... Here's a nice one. I like that. So this is a used one. So this is a 59 reissue going. And it's got, you know, some some flame to it, but not heavy flame. It's in really nice shape for used. $41.99 used Gibson 59 reissue Les Paul in VOS dark bourbon. I like that dark bourbon color, actually. Out of all these colors, that one is kind of uniquely cool. This one's kind of nice too. This kind of looks like it's probably the similar finish. Bourbon. Let's see, the tag is flipped. Let's see, what does it say? Oh, yeah, it says uh, in dark burst. So, this is a, yeah, figure top BOTS something. I don't know what that means. And here's one of those blueberries or bur blueberry burst. Blueberry burst. Bur bur blueberry burst. Nice, right? And here you got the uh, cream and black, or black and cream, if you like your coffee, black or cream. This one's $18.99, so about the price of that same uh, same price as that uh, 78 Deluxe that I saw at Real Guitars. That looks really cool. And that thing weighed a ton. I wonder if I can lift this up. Will it? Will an alarm go off? No. So I can lift it up. It's pretty heavy, but I'll tell you. That other Les Paul was heavier. <laughs> the guy told me, uh, Gary told me it was like uh, 13 pounds easy. So it's like twice the, the weight of my typical strap <laughs> that I have in my in my studio. I have a few. A couple few. Not a lot. Strat style. I have like four strat styles. 
guitars. Kind of like how this has that, you know, you could almost, it almost looks like you could see the ridges, but when you feel it, you, yeah, you can feel it a little bit. But, you know, maple is so hard that I guess they can't uh, get that to polish out without the ridges showing. Interesting. Flame, maple, and that washed cherry. I'm not a huge fan of the washed cherry thing. No, I like that one though. Very nice. Very nice. Trans Ebony Fade. Mm, that would be nice to have. Hmm. Who's here? Blues Junior for 500 bucks. Pretty cool. What else do they have here? A little Super Blue Skin. Nice. And then let's go check out. Oh, we've got some nice amps over here too. We got that Wampler Bravado. Normally goes for thirteen or eighteen ninety nine. Wow, it's like half off. Am I reading that right? Is that eighteen or thirteen? Eighteen. Eighteen ninety nine. So nine sixty eight. So half off, people. If you want a perfect platform amp. Like that bravado right there. You got the PV 6505. Awesome. And then here we got the Archon. Paul Reed Smith Archon. Nice. I'm not sure exactly what amps um, he had in his rack from that distance I was looking at when we were at the Alter Bridge concert, but um, it looked different than his typical PRS. It, it was not the Tremonti, the mini, or the smaller Tremonti 15 watt. It was definitely a 100 watt head of some sort. So you guys, I have a very similar amp to this at home, but an older version. I have a JC90, so a Jazz Course 90, 90 watt, two tens, um, and this one's 779. I bought that for 350 at B Street Music in San Mateo and it's nice so this is the two speaker right 2x12 upright Marshall twenty watt tube guitar amp the STU vintage nice mark two Yep. So I ordered some gold knobs, Tessie switch knobs, this morning for my um, for my brand new HX stop that I got for free. Thank you very much, Eric Broadbent. Oh, look at that! That's so bitchin. I do that so well. This is like a true historic Les Paul reissue, aged. And I guess Vinto Lemon Burst, so Vintage Lemon Burst is what they're calling that. How it's checked and everything along the edges, you see that? I just love looking at guitars because they're like art to me. Beautiful, right? Look at this beautiful Gretsch. So Jack the Rabbit, you were asking about my Bigsby. I have a licensed Bigsby. It is exactly like this, but silver or chrome, you know, and it does go under like that and wrap over and back under. So it goes over, under, over, and through. <laughs> anyway, and I don't lean on it too much, you know, so I don't really throw it out of whack that easily, but that's a nice guitar. I wonder if the black's all sparkle orange like that, or if it's just black. Oh, we've already looked at those. Princeton, Princeton Reverb, a real new deluxe reverb amp, and then they also have those Tone King ones or Tone something. Oh, here it is. 
So there's a Mark Tremonti, 15 watt, Paul Reed Smith. That's the one I was talking about. So for, you know, 729 bucks, you can get a really open, high watt. You know, this supposedly does not sound like 15 watts. <laughs> it's pretty open. But if any of you guys want to argue the point about, you know, what's louder, uh, 15 watt or a 30 watt or 100 watt, Go watch uh, that pedal show where they basically go into how different watt amps will not be that much higher in the decibel range. So in other words, their true loudness, if you want to call it their volume, um, is not really truly that much louder, but you know, because you have more, more tubes pushing the speaker, it's acting in a different way the power is affecting the speaker in a different way and um, you're getting a different level of what everyone is obviously everyone knows if you've looked into this is called headroom that headroom is really what you're gonna really feel it in like the bottom end as they say the lower frequencies and definitely in the uh, you're gonna feel it in the the air being pushed through the cone by the extra power I guess so I guess it just pushes the cones of the speaker harder that regular 25 no 30 ooh regularly 3300 dollars now it's 1900 that's pretty sweet right Ernie Ball Music Man John Petrucci JR15 or JP JP15 of course trans black then here's a majesty over here but that's really nice to that rosewood a full on rosewood neck with the big headstock 1749 with includes case or bag, one or the other. <laughs> I guess you get to choose. <laughs> it's got some pretty cool a couple of pieces in that body there, right? At least one, two, three. And yeah, it looks like it's just three pieces. So a three piece body, not bad. And then here's the majesty here in green. In person it's a lot darker. Nice. Yeah, these are pretty bitchin'. So I've played a couple of these, and um, I, I'm not that good of a player to really know the difference, right? But, I mean, I can feel the difference between a good and a crappy guitar. So that's this room for now. I'm going to go out and keep looking. Hope you guys enjoyed the guitar lounge here. Nice, right? Yeah, I can. I might the keyboard and pro audio section. It's the bass, bass guitars. Okay. Some nice Daphne Blue basses there, some P basses. Hey, dude. Again. Not too bad. Cool, cool, cool. Those look like Spectres. Are those Spectres? Uh, no, they're Ibanez. My brother has a uh, Bubinga body Spectre bass that uh, has a similar color to these. Here's a Warwick. It's not very far off of how this thing looks in its body style either. But I don't think we'll find a Spectre bass in here. Oh, look at that sparkle. Pretty cool. I know, my eyes catch the shiny things. How about that one? Jump right out at you, Eminem Green, or is that even more neon than that? Huh? Pretty crazy. That's a Dean. Dean, makers of loud-looking guitars. Oh, I'm gonna check out some stuff over here in the acoustic room too. We're thankful that there's no one here in the drum room. So last time I was at uh, Jack the Rabbit was talking about. Um, <clears throat> the Emeryville store. The last time I was there with Ladani and I was checking out the uh, Ultra. I think I was playing one of the... Uh, I, I, I played an Ultra Telecaster and I also played... Um, I think it was the Richie Kotzen Tele. Yeah, fat neck on that thing. But it felt good. Even though it was a fat neck, it still felt good in your hands. I think that's the thing, right? But, um, yeah, there were like three different kids in there playing the drums like it was like a you know drum off or something and holy crap 
it was loud. <laughs> if you want to go check that out, just look up Richie Kotzen for uh, Ultra Telecaster video in my playlist. Uh, here's the, the rest of the guitars. They only have a couple few left. Some bongos. Hey, some bongos for you. These aren't officially bongos, are they? They're hand drums. I think the bongos are over there. There we go, bongos. Here you go, Quentin. Or who is it that we were talking about for bongos? <laughs> I can't remember now. In Hack Shack's uh, show today. I was listening to that. I think it was uh, Hack's show. Let's see what they have. I love their uh, acoustic room here. There's like a room or two rooms within a room, which is nice. Ooh, that door almost crushed me. Wow, oh, look at this Woodstock Martin. On sale, 100 bucks off. Yeah. Nice breed loves. Seagulls. Martin, Taylor. Jack the Rabbit has some really nice uh, acoustic guitars. There's a bunch of.